Hello everyone and welcome back to the EGF. It's Tuesday, which means we've got some more Super Smash Brothers Ultimate action come at you. I am Soy, joining me on the desk is Z Minus. How's it going? I'm good, how are you? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. We've got a stacked day ahead of us and first up on the docket is DePaul University, the Beasts from the East, one of the few teams with only one loss on the season, going up against Marist, trying to stay up top in that MAC conference. This should be a good one. We expect a lot of exciting gameplay tonight, for sure. And with that, uh, we'll be getting into our first match of the day between these two. Going in for DePaul first, it's locked in that Matt Beach will be the first representative. And for Maris, it will be uh, Luck, I believe is how you pronounce his name. So this, from what I remember character-wise, Matt Beach is the uh, Mega Man classic uh, main on, on, the, uh, on the side of DePaul. And for Maris, we've got a Cloud main, I believe. So two characters that we've kind of seen pop off in this league, or at least have their pop off moments uh, here and there. This should be this should be a fun one to open the day. And uh, as we wait for the players to enter the arena, I believe the picks and bands have also gone through. I believe we'll be starting on PS2, so another classic start to the day. And uh, yeah, this should be a good one. Uh, as we said uh, before, both of these teams are fairly high up in the in terms of the uh, overall standings DePaul only one loss on the regular season and Marist uh, they are trying to keep pace with the rest of that MAC conference the MAC conference is a uh, well it's a conference that I, I I say this a lot is is kind of split where uh, it's a coin flips chance and uh, you either ended up on the high side of that that coin flip or the season has been uh, essentially a ride of the struggle bus and Maris has ended up on the good side of, uh, of that split uh, trying to keep pace with the likes of Quinnipiac, Siena, uh, St. Peter's right in the thick of that that race so a win here could really benefit them but DePaul they need this win to maintain their standings as the number one team currently ranked in the EGF but I hear the sounds of us entering the arena so here we go match number one to start off the day matt beach versus luck mega man versus sephiroth that's a very interesting pick yeah sephiroth one of the uh newer characters to the smash brothers roster uh and as you see that sword is going to be uh just kind of a pain for matt beach to to deal with it covers so much range but Able to deal with it so far. Quick 38 already racked up. For sure. I may be expecting a lot of good clips coming from the Mega Man. You know, when you have a character like Sephiroth, typically they tend to outrange their opponent. Um, but I feel like Mega Man is really well suited for a lot of those edge trap situations where sometimes the Sephiroth will have to do a fully charged up to recover to get the extra mile. And when you're doing that, you're kind of putting yourself at risk. And I think Mega Man's probably one of the best characters at dealing with that, for sure. I mean, you can already tell here in uh, in neutral, Matt Beach seems to be putting in the work already 100% on luck. And Sephiroth being a surprisingly light character, this is practically kill percent, especially if you can find a strong hit. But now with that... Uh, wing on deck for luck he'll start to do a bit more damage you can tell already a quick 55 built back up that back air not going to be able to take the stock quite yet is this going to catch Sephiroth no he's not going to be able to recover Matt Beach takes the first stock yeah missed recovery I'm assuming that uh luck saw the the charge death smash and was just a little bit intimidated let's see if Matt Beach can keep that pressure up gotta find his way out of the corner here I like the idea to up smash, but not going to work out here. He's using that side B a lot to recover that, that bomb that Mega Man throws out just to kind of pressure Luck on stage, make him think about, uh, you know, where he needs to be in order to edge guard this Mega Man. He just hasn't really had the opportunity to do so. And Matt Beach 
already on the second stock, you know, racking up some percent here. Quick 40, make that 50. That saw blade already doing 10%. Yeah, I like this. I like this cautious play by Matt Beach, like not pushing forward as much, staying under the platform. Uh, whenever Seth Ross coming from up high, Matt Beach is ready to cover it. Um, just overall good understanding of like how to play the neutral versus Seth Ross. Because when you're dealing with a large sword like that, you kind of have to know your way to navigate. Ooh, I like the stall there by Luck, knowing that that spike was going to come out from Matt Beach. He just waits a little bit longer, and then that angle also finds the hitbox to knock Matt Beach away. But still unable to find a stock here. All right, nice. Back to the cinema stage. Will we see an edge guard opportunity? All right, not quite. Just going to let it happen. Both kind of Ooh. dancing around each other in Matt Beach. Another back air is going to seal up that stock. And sitting at 140 on his first stock, Luck has a lot of work to do. Ooh, that was a good crash bomber coming from Matt Beach. All right, good awareness around the platform. Let's see if Luck can come through with the kill here. And Luck gets the kill. That was really good spacing on that forward tilt, too, just to kind of recognize where Matt Beach was going to be and eventually throw out a quick move like F-Tilt to take that stock. And that's the first one off the board, and pretty even here. The problem is every trade that happens between these two is going to go in Matt Beach's favor. Does Luck have anything left in the tank here? Good back throw to the backer. That was a strong hitbox, I believe, but not going to be able to take the stock quite yet. Very good awareness from Matt Beach. Yeah, the downer for Mega Man is definitely a very intimidating move. I'm pretty sure it's plus on shield, so it's very, very safe if you do it. He's been using it a lot, too. Especially when Luck can get kind of trapped around these platforms. That was nearly a shield break, and that downer not going to connect either. This is dangerous. Let's we'll see if another stock could potentially be taken. Let's see. All right, good weight on the recovery with that uh, forward air to wall. Both kind of spacing around each other. I love that dip down low and take that stock. One stock scenario here. Luck sitting at 106, though. All right, the forward air tech chase. Not quite going to get anything from that yet. Ooh, so this is a dangerous percent because as Mega Man, you have back air which will kill on its own. If you manage to land with the hitbox, you could potentially combo into up tilt. This one's very, very intimidating. That said though, it's getting even. A lot of percent. Luck has fought his way all the way back. Can he clean this up though? Both sitting at kill percent. Matt Beach in the corner of the down smash will do it. Luck reverse sweeping on game one. That was amazing. I feel like I feel like at the end of that game there, Luck kind of had an idea of how to just navigate around pellets, but also navigate around uh, Crash Bomber, because there's like a lot of benefits from that. Um, I think the lack of Leaf Shield kind of helped in this scenario, because I think when you have a, a Leaf Shield on deck, you can kind of just push through as Mega Man. Um, I think Luck was able to kind of exploit that uh, lack of movement there and just throw out that down smash, and that killed. Wow, that was amazing. I mean, we hadn't seen Luck throw out a down smash all game, I believe, and just great awareness, too. And, uh, you know, we were talking about Mega Man's down air earlier, and you see that down air from Ledge, a little ambitious, I think. I'm not sure if that's quite what he wanted to, uh, to do or if he was trying to call something out there. But uh, regardless, Luck takes game one. And, and I think you're absolutely right. The way that game turned around, Luck was down three to one. And his play through the, uh, just throughout his last stock, just the space around pellets and all of Mega Man's projectiles was you know, just fantastic.
as you see another look at the replays here courtesy of uh house of 3000 thank you so much but you know here's a just another kind of summary of it all just the those back airs especially through the first two stocks as you as you mentioned by matt beach they were so pivotal in terms of just owning space and you see the pressure that that leaf shield applied and eventually it, were, it was moves that we didn't really see thrown out a lot like down smash and forward tilt that were able to to kind of clean up stocks but I, I feel like at this point right here the dip down low and the edge guard is really where things turned around getting that sweet spot too, confirming that kill just giving himself a chance and then on the last stock Matt Beach grabs the ledge and that down air off of ledge I can't help but think that was a little ambitious and that down smash just well placed, well spaced, and luck able to take game one. Yeah, for sure. It makes me wonder what was going through uh, Matt Beach's head going with that down air option. I'm assuming it's just because it's safe, because I know it's plus on shield, but um, yeah, I, I think it can definitely be very scary because the down smash is very good at covering ledge options. It can cover get up attack, uh, ledge get up. Um, at the right time, you can catch a jump. Um, I think right there in that scenario, I think with a little bit more patience and potentially going for, let's say, a ledge roll, I think Matt Beach could have potentially avoided that. Um, that said, Luck did a phenomenal job uh, executing the offstage play. Uh, great spacing, good forward air to kill. So overall, I thought that was a great way, or a great representation of what it means to really adapt in a matchup of that matter, for sure. And that's really the the mark of a a top tier player is their ability to uh, adapt on the fly. You know, I mean, Luck was on his last stock there and brought it all the way back. And, and Sephiroth is one of those characters that has that sort of comeback mechanic where if they mm -hmm. are are down or damaged, they get that extra the uh, jump and speed with the with. Um, I'm blanking on what the actual term is, but when the wing comes out for Sephiroth, uh, right. you know, he, he gets a little bit faster and I believe has an extra jump. So he, he is one of those characters that has that comeback mechanic. But in this league, we don't see a whole lot of comebacks, especially of that scale and on a, a player like Matt Beach. Matt Beach is typically, you know, on, uh, everyone on this DePaul roster. I mean, the, the roster oh, itself definitely. is 10 and 1. Uh, or uh, actually, I think... I think by now there's something along the lines of 12 and one, but oh, uh, wow. they still they they are you know a, a solid team across the board. So to to come back three one in game number one like that is a is a big yeah you know, it's a massive swing against a team that feels like they close these out 99 percent of the time. I'm just going to take a quick look at uh, team here. Ready? Okay, we're running it back with Mega Man Seth Roth. Let's see the stage. Okay. Alright, we're here at Lilat. Um... Right now, I would say this stage might be a little wonky for Sephiroth, um, just because the slants are a little bit weird, but I also think that could kind of hurt Mega Man as well. Um, I'd say the only thing significant about this stage, really, aside from the slants, is probably the fact that the upper blast zone is quite low, um, and so you can get a lot of good kills off the top, and I think one thing that Sephiroth does a really good job of doing is covering the platforms. So I think having an even amount of triplats, that's going to be perfect for Sephiroth. Because now you can do up smash, up tilt, a lot of things to cover uh, space. Matt Beach at an early disadvantage here. Oh no, oh, neutral no. get up into the neutral B. Luck takes the first stock. Uh, you never want a neutral get up against a move like that. That will kill you. <laughs> I mean, that's just a, a heck of a way to start game one, right? I mean, it felt fairly even. Matt Beach had a little bit of a disadvantage, and then that that move just kind of sucked the air out of any momentum Matt Beach had. Let's 
see if we can keep this pressure. Alright, good up smash, the shield, not gonna quite take it. Ooh. Yeah, look is getting a little antsy doing those dash attacks. I know it's a like a decent burst option because of its knockback, but it doesn't have quite enough speed to it. And I think with a character like Mega Man, you want to be careful. And as I say that, Matt Beach with the back here, stealing that stock. Uh, let's see what's gonna happen this time around. I like that move to pick up the saw blade and then uh, go off stage with that back air and, and pressure again. It probably wasn't going to take the stock, but it applied a lot of shield pressure and got some damage on and it almost led to another kill there off of that up smash. And now Matt Beach off stage once again does manage to find his way back to center stage. And I think that's one thing you're, you're going to have to watch as this match goes on is how does Matt Beach get out of the corner? Because as you said, Luck can really dance around these platforms very well, and the dash attack cleaning up that second stock too. Last stock for, Mass Be or for Matt Beach. Actually, want to go on that point about shield pressure. You mentioned uh, a lot of shield pressure on the corner. Um, it's really interesting. So I think what Luck is doing a very good job of doing is applying constant shield pressure, even from afar. Uh, I forget the term for it, but uh, I know that. Uh, Sephiroth's side B, very good move for conditioning shield. Um, it's a great move to really stop someone in their movement. And so by using that side B, it's causing Matt Beach to not really get away with these rising bears or rising fairs. Ooh, that was almost a stock. <laughs> Nearly confirming off that side B, and you can tell Matt Beach is just struggling to find a way back to stage. Caught him with the up air, has to air dodge, can't follow up with anything, and that up smash is going to take the stock, though. So back to a one stock scenario here. Yeah, the up smash had a shield. I know, I know Matt Beach was really looking forward to that, for sure. And now, at this percent, we'll see how Luck will take the stock. Or maybe Matt Beach could gather enough percent for perhaps maybe in like an up tilt kill back air kill uh we'll see we'll see map beach has to play so careful remember he has to take this stock to extend the set and possibly earn him his team some points if not luck will take the the bonus points for winning the set i like the idea to go for the up tilt there not gonna be able to connect this should be a forward throw no just grab release Catches him on the down tilt. That <gasps> side be not going to be able to take the stock. I like the idea, though. Matt Beach sitting at 156. Won't die to the F tilt. He finds his way back. Another good up air coming from Luck. We'll see the edge trap. No. Oh, the down air. This is tense. 174. Has to find a way around that neutral B. Does grab. Back throw. Not going to be able to take the stock. No follow-up, throws the saw blade, F tilt gonna miss, can't connect the second. And Matt Beach is back on stage, gets the grab. Oh, off throws stage? Back. The counter not gonna be able to take the stock either. Back air. Back air, another back air potentially. Misses it. And the F tilt ends it, that's a 2-0. The clutch victory from Luck. <laughs> Turn of events there, I mean, just... That game was down to the wire once again. Matt Beach is sitting at 196, and that back air read just slightly off luck, recovering just high enough. And then that F tilt just perfectly, you know, ar arranged around that roll to catch uh, Matt Beach off guard. And Maris, first to strike here against the DePaul Blue Devils, luck with two one stock victories. And the uh, two points for winning the set means that Marist will take a 4-0 lead as we get ready for match number two. Still waiting to hear on, on who will go in, but I mean, that was that was a, a, a heck of a set to start off the day. Yeah, that was a wonderful set. I think the first game was a great representation of what it means to adapt. The second one was... Kind of a great presentation of like what it means to adapt to adaptation. You know, you saw in that first game, uh, Luck was pretty much down. And then Luck realized, okay, if I'm constantly getting projectiles thrown at me, what do I want to do? Okay, I don't want to just stand still. Uh, sometimes I want to shield, sometimes I kind of want to like dash back. And then when uh, Matt Beach was kind of whiffing a lot of attacks, 
uh, Luck was like, okay, I'm just going to keep spacing out with forwarding. Uh, now going into game two, uh, Matt Beach responded by being a lot more careful, not necessarily doing a lot of rising aerials, more so like landing aerials. Um, and so near the end of it, uh, Matt Beach had the right idea in mind, but um, unfortunately, when you're at like a percent deficit like that, it can be really hard to come back, even if you have an idea of how to play. 